these are all webinars targeted as, at SME owners, at entrepreneurs, at retailers, at business owners. So you're free to welcome, uh, you're welcome to join in any time. And these are some of the testimonials we have received at MMA uh, and RAI uh, in terms of people who have attended the webinars. So just for you to have a look. And just a quick introduction on the upcoming webinars. So we are uh, <coughs> this webinar tomorrow. We are doing a webinar with uh, uh, Mr. Nagasami Danapalan, uh, MD of Dindical Talapakati. On uh, he of course uh, heads a heritage brand called Dindical Tal Talapakati, based out of Tamil Nadu, and growing now across the world. We have that tomorrow. So guys, who, whoever want to log in can log in there. And then uh, day after tomorrow, we have increase your business using Facebook, Insta, and WhatsApp. And on Friday, we have an interesting webinar, which also has a PVR connection. We have someone from PVR's team, Bhavesh Shah, joining us, uh, along with Sunday Shreddy of Sandy's Chocolate Lab, for a discussion on future of FNB business in India. So we have all this up for you guys this week. So as you all know, the, talk, uh, uh, the meet today is with Mr. Gautam Datta. So uh, I will just quickly head on to an introduction about the speakers. Uh, for people who are new to this platform, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Balachandra. I am an entrepreneur myself. Uh, I run a business which is into the laundry and dry cleaning space called Wasap Laundry. We were one of the pioneers in this space when this, the industry was largely unorganized. So, uh, before that, I come from a retail background. I have about 20 years of retail exposure. And I work on business transformation with the retail and consumer companies. I've worked with companies that include uh, High Design, Your Story, Naturals, and as well, tomorrow, the brand that's going to be there, Dindical Talapakati. Uh, I'm a council member with the Retail Association of India, fairly active uh, with the retailers community, and uh, help out with various other initiatives like this uh, webinar, which are part of our community. Uh, so that's about me, for whoever wanted to know about me. And we come on to the star of the show, Mr. Gautam Datta. Uh, he is, as you all know, the CV uh, CEO of PVR Cinemas. He, come, uh, he has put in 28 years of leadership and marketing experience in, in his career. He has spent the last 15 years growing the brand from the 40 screen that he joined to about <coughs> 900 screens and made it the largest entertainment brand in the country. Apart from PVR, he has also launched uh, uh, Blue O, which is uh, India's largest bowling alley um, you know, uh, chain. Uh, he is uh, also, uh, you know, he comes from an advertising background with uh, experiences prior to PVR at Rediffusion, Sachi and Sachi, and, and also Lolindas. Uh, he is a widely respected and acknowledged leader at uh, PVR, and all of the PVR staff river uh, um, Mr. Gautam. So that's been evident in the last few days of interaction with all the PVR team to set this whole uh, webinar up. And um, uh, they're very happy to, and in fact, we have a a uh, huge uh, amount of PVR staff also joining in into this webinar. So I would like to say a warm welcome to all the PVR team who are here, um, who are here to listen to Mr. Gautam Tata as well. You can all, uh, all the PVR team, you can say hi PVR to each of you guys. So that will be nice to know how, how many of you are here. Yes, here we go. Hi PVR. Meena starts off. Thanks Meena for putting this together for us. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and then to add on to Mr. Gautam's uh, list of, uh, you know, achievements, he's won the, the CEO of the Year Award by ET Now for Retail Excellence. He is, you know, all in spite of all his uh, business achievements, he is a firmly rooted family man. And a trivia about him is that, is that he loves to paint. So we are going to hear more about his hobbies and all. And I'm a disaster on painting. Yeah, but yeah, I try to paint. <laughs> Many of them don't tell that. So we like to hear from you on that. So uh, before we head on, and I hand over the controls to. Uh, Ankush, who will be, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, putting across the PPT. We also have something special for you guys who are all here. This weekend, we have a uh, webinar course from MMA and Rai, certified webinar from MMA and Rai on Go Digital. So this will bring to you various uh, aspects and skills that you need to not only take your brand online, take your business online, but also transact, engage, do e-commerce and uh, you know, grow your business as well. So this is on the 1st and 2nd of May, uh, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., uh, six hours totally. We have um, a lot of industry experts joining us for this webinar. And uh, this is available for today's viewers at a uh, uh, special price. So I'll leave the link at the end of the webinar for you. So anybody interested can join in. And I think now we will go into the segment directly. Over to you, Ankush. I'll stop sharing my screen. You can take over. Over to you, Mr. Gautam. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. 
So last few days, uh, world life is all changing for us. Uh, we are learning this new way of interacting, something that I haven't done in the past. So, uh, but yeah, now sitting in front of the screen and talking is strange. Uh, I, I'm so used to looking at people and talking and emoting to them. Uh, this uh, is definitely not so easy for me and doesn't come to me so naturally. But how, having said that, as I said, these, these are changing times and uh, we all have to adapt. So here am I uh, sort of presenting myself. So uh, I'll, I'll have, I've just done, Pala, one short introduction about myself uh, because you said I needed to, uh, not that it sort of, uh, I have anything substantial to say, but really this is what I am and this is what I've done. Um, in 1998, I was just fresh out of school. Uh, I was quite a dud. Uh, and uh, sort of uh, a very, very average student. Uh, so the only way I had to move on was about um, working, going out and seeing if I could work and learn something. So I, I was a salesman till the age of 20 uh, and I was selling filing systems. I had no idea where I was going, uh, no idea how I'll possibly move up in life. And then one, uh, one day I just landed up myself as a summer trainee with uh, Lintas, uh, an advertising agency. I didn't even know that Lintas was really, uh, uh, what was advertising then? I had no clue. And my really, my formal education uh, started at Lintas at that point in time. Uh, at 24, after about roughly about three and a half, four years, uh, I got my first uh, appointment letter uh, from Saatchi, uh, uh, where I went from Lintas. And that's when my career really started off. Uh, then after about three years, I came to low Lintas again, back from Saatchi. And this time we, uh, uh, I spent close to about nine years uh, at uh, Lintas. Then moving on to Rediffusion, uh, where I, I, at the age of 35, I was heading Rediffusion Delhi. Uh, and that's when uh, I encountered this wonderful brand called PBR. Uh, uh, it was my account and I was kind of handling uh, that bit. And, uh, and then uh, after a little while, I, I was offered uh, a job by Ajay uh, as the head of marketing at PBR. I moved in as marketing, took over media sales. Then I became the CEO of uh, Bluo, the bowling business that we launched in India. And then finally, I was uh, uh, asked to uh, take charge of operations. Uh, and last five years, I have been taking charge of operations as well. So this is really what I am. Uh, but uh, if, if I look back in one line that really sums it up, uh, that I would say I'm a product of God's grace completely, uh, simply because uh, when I look back, I see nothing uh, 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 that I have or had, uh, which would have propelled me to this position. Uh, so uh, really can't thank God enough. And sometimes as people say, you have to be at the right place at the right time uh, to make an impact. Uh, uh, God had some bigger plans for me and it, it made sure that I was at the right place at the right time with the right set of people. And, and uh, that's how uh, I, I continue to grow. Uh, so that's really about me. Uh, I would request Ankush to now play the, uh, the, the film, a little video uh, introductory on PVR, uh, and then we'll take it out from there. Ankush, we can't hear the audio. Yeah, there is no audio. Okay. 
Is it because of your headphones? Ankush, could it be because of your headphones? I think I'll just call Ankush. Yeah. Ankush, uh, we can't hear the audio. Maybe it's because of your headphones. If you pull it out, that will be audible. Okay. Audio is it's it's audible at your end. No worries. Let's skip it. Can't hear you. Let's move. Okay. So Let's I move. have the video as well. So if you can stop sharing, I'll share the video. Then you can go back to the people. I'm just sharing the video. Balai, we can't see the video now. You can't see the video. Is it visible, sir? No. Not to me, at least. Sorry, I think... I'm going to try for one more time. Then we can see whether... Uh... Is, it, is it visible, sir? You can see... Yes, my... yes, yeah.
just puts together the awesome tvr journey in 3 minutes and under 45 seconds so i'll stop this screen share ankush you can take over the ppt over to you sir uh thanks everyone uh, our journey has been as scratchy as the video was uh, it stopped and moved ahead for every enterprise uh, uh, in the country uh, it is is never that easy but really tvr survived because we say it's for the love of movies and the consumers that we end up entertaining uh, we have close to about 100 million consumers coming into pvr now uh, every year and uh, we are really really proud of the fact uh, of uh, this facet that uh, at some point in time we had dreamt that we would have uh, you know india coming to the movies that was really what it is uh, but however i have uh, you know i have divided my presentation into two halves the first half is really about what pvr has achieved in terms of uh, leadership uh, and numbers and i'll quickly take you through that don't want to bore you with that but and then the second part of the presentation is really rewinding on all these numbers and saying what were the little things that one learned along the way what was uh, the brand uh, learnings that one had which uh, knowingly or unknowingly pvr applied and and uh, have uh, saw great results is something that perhaps all of us could learn from but more importantly uh, something that i have not been able to capture in this presentation but i really wanted to make a point that uh, whatever we do and wherever we are in life in terms of individual or as a brand we must understand that there is no absolutely no substitute to hard work resilience and hunger uh, uh, i say this uh, simply because whether you are an individual starting off in your career or a, a businessman you need to understand the need or, or the or the importance of hanging in the uh, most youngsters today that i talk to sometimes uh, i feel lack resilience and something that we ought to learn adapt and transfer uh, all of this uh, to organizations and individuals across that we need there is absolutely no substitute to hard work resilience and hunger and also uh, i have seen this at least in my case and with pvr in many many enterprise that i have seen closely when i was in advertising that luck plays equally an important part in building a brand something very uh, unique you can't possibly put a finger to it but the reality is that luck also has a very very huge what you are destined to achieve is what you achieve in life uh, so and you cannot underestimate the power of that god's grace and luck that you normally have so uh, guys uh, 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 sort of fasten your seat belt i'm going to move really really fast so that i don't bore you at all with this so uh, this is the first slide which really talks about the fact uh, ankush if you could go back please for a second uh, from all aspects of from 2004 to 2019 how where our business while we started off in 1997 2000 was four when, when the business was uh, uh, was getting shape and size uh, even then if you see the kind of quantum jumps we've had across everything uh, uh, has been remarkable from a mere 60 crore turnover to a 3200 crore 
turnover, a market cap of today 1.2 billion. Nobody could have ever imagined this could happen. Next slide, please. Uh, we are, uh, while if you look at the screen size uh, on um, the, uh, the chart, you will see that PVR has about 845 screens as against an AMC, which operates in America uh, with over 11,000 screens. But look at the footfalls. Uh, we, uh, uh, this year, we are, we are looking to get about 120 million people in comparison to roughly about 360 million people that AMC would get, which means that we are the seventh largest in terms of admissions, which also tells us that India love their movies. Uh, and and uh, this is a form of entertainment, which is going to remain in India for years and years and years. And only with about 845 screen, we are the seventh largest in the world uh, in terms of admissions that we get. Next slide, please. This is the, uh, the highest market share that PBR has across all regions. Uh, and uh, even in terms of Hollywood and Bollywood film collection, we, we uh, um, uh, sort of contribute close to about 40% of every Hollywood film that gets released in India and roughly uh, between 22 to 24% of all Hollywood films that get released. Next. Uh, this was a specific slide that I wanted to sort of focus on because a lot of you uh, may, may not know that even in terms of advertising, we, we garner close to about 33, 34% of the total advertising pie of uh, the multiplex today with roughly about 410 crores. All I can tell you is when I joined PBR uh, that year, about 14 and a half years back, we were roughly at about six and a half, seven odd crores from seven crores to 410 crores. That's been the kind of journey that we've seen. And uh, there are a total of about 10,000 odd screens in India, all screens put together single screens, uh, which is the majority in India, uh, only about 10%, 11% of the total screens are actually multiplex screens. We garner 33% of the total uh, 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 cinema advertising today in India. Next slide. We have uh, roughly about 11% of our total screen count as premium screens, something that a lot of people do not know that India today, uh, uh, every market, be it Lucknow, be it Nagpur, be it uh, Trivandrum, every market, as small as it is in, in India, are, are craving for uh, uh, a luxury format in form of either Gold Class, IMAX, 4DX, PXL. These are various formats that we have. And 11% of our total screen count uh, is actually uh, 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 the luxury screen formats today. So this is really a sum total of our leadership position in India. We've technically uh, uh, pretty much, uh, whether it's the food sales, EBITDA margin, uh, uh, average ticket price, which is what is what we call as the ATP, uh, average uh, food spend per patron is about 91 rupees. Uh, we've pretty much, uh, 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 you know, topped on all parameters of uh, uh, a multiplex business in India. And when compared globally, uh, we would be at the top uh, three level in terms of ratios of uh, businesses achieved. Next slide. These are the various brands that we have. Uh, we have uh, absolutely the top end bespoke solution uh, a brand called the Director's Cut, followed by Icon, then a Superplex. Superplex is uh, uh, cinemas which have more than 10 screens. Then the Mid-Belly PVR, which is the mainstream, the maximum number of screens fall under this belly. And then we've got the PVR Utsa, which is really about selling tickets at about 100 rupees uh, price range. Next slide. So this is all about PVR that uh, PVR has done and achieved. Now let's 
look at all these numbers yet again, but this time through the prism of branding and something that we could learn from. Next. First and foremost, uh, you may find this visual a little uh, odd, but I just loved it for what it was, uh, which really spoke about brand needs to have conviction. Way back in 1997, I wasn't a part of PVR then, but I was told that Mr. Bijli, who started off this company, had so much conviction about this business that it wasn't funny. Uh, and people would laugh at him, saying, are you crazy? Uh, cinema and, and uh, is, is, is a dying business. Nobody is putting money. And here you are wanting to build a multiplex, uh, smaller screens, three times the capex, uh, three times the ticket price. Would this succeed in India? Uh, uh, have you really thought through it? But this man uh, was completely convinced and said, I'm going to do this. And not only am I going to do this, I have a very strong conviction and a vision around this business. Next slide, please. And that's where he came from. At the very start of his journey, he said, this is my vision. I have to take India to the movies. He realized that India is an extremely entertainment starved country. We, we love our movies. We love the large screen comp, uh, uh, you know, experience. And he said, whatever may happen, whatever you may say, reality is not only can I revive cinema, I can also revive the experience. I can revive the industry. And that's what he ended up doing. It wasn't just about uh, sort of rebuilding and reshaping the cinema industry. It was all about reshaping the entire uh, industry, so to speak. Today, uh, better movies are being created, better collections are happening. Uh, we've got so many superstars. Thank to that one move, that one spirit, clarity of thought of saying, this is what I wish to do. And so uh, the point that all the audience should take, have the conviction, have a vision, a goalpost in mind when you start off for yourself or for your brand. And remember one very important thing that individuals are also brands. Uh, like we nurture uh, our businesses and brands, we need to nurture our own self. Every individual is actually a brand. Every individual can shape up to, to do big things just as a brand can do. Next slide, please. And see how this uh, vision took shape. It took him 20 years, but see where PVR has kind of reached. Every nook and corner of India was mapped out by PVR. And, and it doesn't stop here. We are going to be doubling our screen growth in next two to three years. Uh, so we are currently about 850 screens. If all goes well, we should be close to about 1,500 in next three, three and a half years. Another great point, brands love scale. It's very important that this is thought through and this is planted and nourished at the right time. Right in 2003, uh, you know, the, the brand got a PE investment. In 2006, PVR went uh, uh, public, acquired Cinemax, DT, and SPI cinemas along the way. Reality is that if you have a vision, you need finances, you need to think out of the box, you need to be open for acquisitions and mergers to be able to move ahead. A lot of businesses that I speak to today somewhere lose that plot. The ownership is as important as having scale in a business. If you've got a great idea, look for scale. Look for timely infusion of funds, uh, uh, timely uh, move forward in terms of acquisitions to be able to garner that scale. Next slide. 
brand needs to create their own U- USP. Uh, I think this is something that I can say uh, I have experienced myself and something that I, I believe all you entrepreneurs and, and, and uh, uh, you know, professionals would possibly live by. Restlessness and paranoia are brand's asset. While a lot of gurus will tell you, uh, you know, you need to be calm and settled and relaxed and people talk about work-life balance. But the reality is at the core of all this growth comes a lot of restlessness and paranoia. Somebody needs to be uh, creating havoc and, and, and be restless for growth, restless to create USPs, restless to break what is working perfectly well. And I think that requires not only restlessness and paranoia, but a lot of guts. What seems to be fine today will not be fine tomorrow. What got us here will not get us there tomorrow. Uh, They say the best time to change is before it's time to change. Because when it's time to change, it's too late to change. So brands have to have this plot, the ability to kill yourself before anyone else comes and kills you is something that I think PVR learned it long back. Our ability to give and create USPs far ahead of its time is something that really has given huge dividends to the brand PVR. Next slide, please. So in the process, uh, you know, if you see everything got redefined and continuously gets redefined. So if you ask me what's new at PVR, I don't have an answer, honestly. You have to ask me what's new at PVR's uh, F&B design. What's new at PVR in terms of seating comfort? What new at PVR in terms of technology? What is new at PVR in terms of uh, lighting, in terms of even smell, back of the office? Everything is getting redefined virtually every day. Every day we come back, get to office and say, how do we do this differently? We've done it. Fantastic. It's given us dividends. Can I break this today to recreate something smarter tomorrow? In terms of design and comfort, technology, food and hospitality, people and marketing, we everything got redefined. Whoever thought that cinemas could be at par with five-star hotels or seven-star hotels in the world. Look at some of the cinemas that PVR has built. Could anyone imagine that a technology, India, and a, and a chain out of India would possibly be the, the biggest adopters of technology in the world? We were the very first to go digital in the world uh, uh, when this whole digitization move happened on the projector. We are today the very first organization who signed a contract uh, with one of the biggest uh, projector companies in the world called Barco to go all laser. From about six months back, PVR only buys laser technology, which people are yet thinking and dreaming of. So the fact is on everything, food and hospitality, there was a time when only popcorn and Pepsi used to be the staple diets of cinema. We changed it. We said, why can't we be competing be uh, competing with a, a Michelin star restaurant? Why can't we get Sara Todd? Why can't we have sushi? Why can't we have pasta with white and red sauce? Why can't we was really the question. Why is it that the cinema food has to be that boring, just uh, Pepsi and popcorn? Why can't we go beyond? Why can't we have 50 flavors of, uh, uh, of popcorn? People and processes, uh, uh, everything got redefined. Young people got recruited. They were trained well, trained on great platforms. Uh, uh, they were all aspiring uh, hotel management uh, guys who came into cinema, who knew hospitality. And it was m- f- moving from clinical efficiency to warm and hospitable places. Marketing, another thing, they, when we started off, people said you only market about movies and you market about 
when and how these movies run at what time we said no we'll change it we challenged it and changed every bit of it and i will just take you through quickly some examples that we did across all uh, let's start with first design and comfort this is uh, one of our cinemas in chennai we are chennai this is how it looks uh, a chandelier that cost us close to about 2.5 crore rupees uh, at the entrance uh, uh, nobody could have ever imagined a cinema could look as as, uh, as beautiful as this ankush yeah this is our new director's cut who would say these are all cinemas now look at the restrooms the seating comfort all leather seating this is at phoenix mills mumbai lower parel in terms of technology now 4dx imax onyx this is the led screen by samsung sara todd uh, has been associated with pvr for over two and a half two years now and does our entire menu for the gold class and lux lux we've got the the number one mixologist uh, of india uh, doing drinks uh for uh, pvr we've got the chef from hong kong to launch a brand called simply sushi now india and sushi is still you know coming to grips with it and here is pvr already launched its own sushi brand called simply sushi uh and and uh, and brilliant absolutely uh you know feedback on on the kind of food we serve these are some of the local unique brands that we have created now they are being created not only for pvr but once established we could also take them outside pvr so again it's a vision of saying in food we got to be so well defined uh that uh these brands in itself could become so big and strong that tomorrow they could have a life far beyond pvr this is um, our uh, microwave popcorn you're getting to see this a little ahead of time once the lockdown gets over in 15 days we are going to be launching this and uh, now sitting at home you could actually enjoy uh, a pvr popcorn we are also getting into home delivery uh, where zomato and swiggy and a few other sites would actually be uh, 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 you know uh, delivering food pvr food to your place people and processes as i said top of the notch uh, people's picked up from all uh, hotel management background a uh, very well trained service on seats a uh, fantastic customer experience uh, and uh, and and uh, you know a complete management program behind them there's a, a a a training module called the springboard which helps every individual we have roughly about 12 and a half thousand people at pvr and they all have a login id with the springboard and they can possibly take lessons online marketing every uh, year we come up with new tag lines which are far beyond what perhaps a cinema company can ever think of we we positioned ourselves differently uh, we know by talking to consumers uh, that today cinema is like a 3 hour vacation i come there to get pampered uh, there are different aspects of of uh, a uh, cinema advertising that we've picked up what cinema does to consumers in their life again none of this is uh, hinging on just movies it's far beyond a movie 
into their life. We have a new commercial which says every chair holds a story. I don't know how it will play, Ankush. Do you want to try or skip? I, I'll just. Okay. Let's see if it works. Okay. Are you hearing audio? No. It doesn't move. It's static. Leave it, Ankush. I, I think it'll possibly not work. Okay, so we, we've spoken about how restless and we need to be to create USPs and it's a continuous journey. What we've done today, if you were to ask me to make a presentation six months down the line, everything will change. Similarly, brands have to be very, very clear that they cannot be led by the consumers. A lot of people believe that I will go ask the consumer what he wants. None of the consumers ever came back to us and told us that they wanted Sarah Todd or they wanted uh, a microwave popcorn or they wanted recliners. They can't imagine. So brands have to listen, have to be uh, very attentive to what consumers are saying, but they cannot be led by the consumers. And that is one of the reasons why PBR has always been the very first to introduce so many. The, the list is actually endless. I just had one slide to it. I could fill up 20 slides uh, on being the industry first uh, across the board. And, and this, I thought, was something very important for all professionals and entrepreneurs to take back, to say, while it's great to check with consumers, but don't get led by the consumers, lead the consumer. Next slide, please. While you are on this path, it'll be very unfair for me to not bring one aspect. Brands all, also needs to have great ability and guts to fail. Failures make a brand. Failures make an individual. How much failure and how much resilience you have to face failures really make a brand what it is. So even in PVR's uh, journey, there's been up umpteen numbers of failures and big ones uh, that we've tried, failed. But what is so wonderful is uh, these failures have never been able to uh, stop us from trying more to doing something. We got into production got out of production completely, uh, got into VR, uh, didn't sort of do so well. We tried a restaurant business, didn't do so well. So we've been trying a lot. Uh, and, and as we garner bigger and longer list for success, we also have a fairly uh, long list of failures, which we take it in our stride and move forward. Next slide. I think this is something that, um, uh, uh, at least at PVR, it's been very, very important, not only today, but even 20 years back. Uh, uh, as individuals and brands, we've, we've been a, a group of committed people, a brand which always wanted to give back to society. While we were growing, as we were flourishing, we always wanted to give back uh, enough and more uh, to the society, and that's where we had our CSR wing called the PVR Nest. And I think uh, uh, it, uh, Deepa uh, did a fantastic job for us. She's been, in fact, Deepa and me joined the company virtually the same year, about the same time. And, and uh, I, I think we are all very proud of the fact that as we've grown uh, uh, in our journeys, uh, uh, PBR, we've actually given back uh, enough and more to the society as well. Next slide. Uh, towards the last, I think anyone who thinks that they can do it on their own, uh, absolutely impossible. Brands 
and individuals need team as they say it takes a village to raise a child it takes a village a team a group to raise a brand every department has a role to play to build a brand a brand is not or, or branding is not the sole responsibility of one department it it has to be cohesive and everyone needs to play a part uh, and and uh, at least for pbr we have always maintained that we are the support staff to the real business that is happening at the cinema brands are built and destroyed at the ground level where our people meet where our technology where our innovation meets um, uh, our staff our people our products so it's important that enough and more focus is given not just in the boardroom or on new innovations enough and more focus needs to go at ground zero because that is really where brands are being built or getting destroyed next slide please and really the outcome i can say for myself uh, in a in a brand history uh, uh, you know when you start off uh, you start off with a product or an idea that then becomes a product then becomes a trademark when people begin to recognize you and say i have seen it somewhere this is an upcoming brand uh, we call it a trademark the next level is when you secure your position as a brand across the board people look at you recognize you and say hey this is a brand and then comes the ultimate a love mark and i think a love mark is where on two parameters on respect and on love when the brand begins to garner uh you know positions uh, it attains a, a figure of a love mark and i can say that pvr uh, in all its uh, achievement uh, and in all our conversation with consumers uh, uh, has attained that mark of a love mark there is still lots to do and this is not an easy position it's not as if attained once you cannot slide down you can uh, and and hence the need to continuously be galloping and moving forward understanding what it takes to be a love mark and and expectations are soaring so something that we are very aware of and we continuously uh, sort of get to office to keep working on this aspect next slide please for leader brands position is just a milestone it is a continuous journey one has to keep innovating for being ahead there is no stopping there is no uh, taking a gap year a gap month a gap day it is in pursuit of excellence that we have to keep going both as individuals and brand uh, and that i think makes our journey so exciting thank you so much uh, this is all i had for you thank you wonderful sir it's uh, it's a fascinating journey to hear it from you and uh, especially the stuff that you told about trademark moving into a brand and love mark i think the uh, you know advertising person inside you has uh, you know kind of been very evidently shown I, i what i'll do is i'll just quickly play that video because i have it here with me that's an amazing sure. you know pbr video that we have i'm just going to play for the audience and then come back for uh, questions so sure. i hope all of you can see my screen now with the pbr video yes can i hear yes on the chat box if you can see my screen yes so i'll go ahead and play the video
amazing. So we can't Thank define you. the brand uh, much better than this. And firstly, uh, thanks a lot, sir, for taking us through that presentation and putting that effort to, uh, you know, communicate to uh, through us through your style, slides and stories. So before I, we, we're getting a lot of questions. So before I start up on a quest uh, on questions, there's a message from you know your fans uh, from Tamil Nadu. Shall we yeah. want to know the message? Okay. Mm -hmm. So when what happened is when PV, we got to know about the news that PVR is acquiring Satyam Cinemas, there was you know that there was a lot of frenzy around. Right. You know? right. What will change? Will the name change? Will the popcorn change? So many of you want, uh, many, many of us in Tamil Nadu want to thank you for letting the popcorn be as it is, <laughs> maintaining the Satyam popcorn. I think that's an iconic, uh, iconic, uh, you know, uh, dish that we have all grown up to. Sure. And the whole feeling of uh, going into a Satyam and having that popcorn. And I think with PBR partnership, we can all very happily say now after a year that the whole experience has got enhanced. So thank you for that's, that. Thank so, you so much. Thank you. That leads me to the first question. So, uh, you know, you build this brand, uh, you know, not only growing it organically, but also consolidating and acquiring. So how difficult it is for a business leader when you acquire brands, because there's so many different facets of culture, what each brand stands for is very different. How do you manage to, you know, bring them all together and take them in, uh, into one vision? Classic case being Satyam itself, you know, you've done beautifully well in Tamil Nadu post that position. I think the team is also quite, uh, you know, we can see that it's seamlessly working. And we don't see as consumers any difference now. And how do you manage to do that? What's your, uh, you know, uh, uh, secret behind acquisitions and merging them into PBR brand? So it's it's never been easy. Uh, le let me be very honest. Uh, in the sense, we we had a little experience coming to SPI because before SPI we had acquired Cinemax and DT. But uh, the one word that I think uh, 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 I could say really helped us uh, maneuver this entire merger in this manner was respect. I think uh, when, uh, and, and while it sounds very logical, uh, uh, you know, the acquiring company often forgets this because when you acquire a brand, you feel you've acquired everything and you shall prevail. And, and that's what capitalist markets always make you learn that you have paid a price now this is yours and if it's yours you can do what you want with it and that to uh, a successful brand like pvr uh, it, it could have been very normal and logical to go out and prevail all over uh, the the spi way of doing it but honestly i think the respect and humility of of saying that uh, you know uh, they have achieved a, a brilliant success in what they were doing. They they have they have run cinemas uh, uh, perhaps uh, in some quarters better than how PBR has run. Uh, to be aware and to be respectful of people, processes, organization across the board, and saying, "Hey, this is a great time to come together and learn." So not only did we sort of give them enough room to actually grow and to feel comfortable with the PBR team. We, in fact, offered them, uh, the SPI team, to take charge of all the PBR cinemas in Tamil Nadu. So the entire team said, oh, and they really got excited. And I think, uh, uh, to my mind, that was a master stroke. And, and it genuinely came because one trusted and had a lot of respect for what they had built. And uh, I, I, and then I think uh, everything was very, very easy. As you say, it needs a lot of humility from a large brand like PBR to do that. Uh, so kudos to you and your team for that. Uh, my next uh, question is, uh, during the 90s and early 2000s, uh, most of them predicted the death of the movie industry, you know, the, the large screens. And because technology was coming in, TV was getting much better. But I, I think... Uh, you know, led by PVR, uh, the quality multiplexes actually outshone that whole prediction that came in. Now, again, with OTT now, uh, you know, you see a lot of prediction happening that, you know, uh, entertainment experience will move into mobile phones. Um, what's the future now? What are you thinking uh, will happen to the movie going public and the industry now? COVID, I will come to later. Bala, we've heard this some, uh, uh, you know, close to five or six times. Uh, DVD came People said the same thing. 
uh, earlier uh, VHS was there. People said you would die. Then DVDs came. Video play, uh, DVD players became really cheap. They said now you will surely die. Then piracy happened. They said now to no chance. People can sit back and watch it. Uh, then IPL came, and people say three months nobody is going to release any film because everybody will be watching cricket. You know, uh, people don't understand. We are no longer in the business of showing movies. We are in the business of creating memories. We are in the business of out of home entertainment. So actually, this the the whole graph has changed today. You you know uh, one very strange and interesting uh, uh, fact. Is that on I think 18th or 19th of March we closed down uh, uh, due f- for uh, this COVID. A day before, when we were running and we were running with close to about only 55% of our cinemas running, we got close to 1,80,000 people coming to the cinema. There was no new release. People knew there was an issue with coronavirus spreading, and yet people came out. You open the lockdown today, and see what happens. And give us people are just dying to come out. Uh, ask people if the lockdown gets over on a Wednesday. What will they do on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? I bet by Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, most of the consumers are saying we're going to come back to the cinema. So cinema is no longer just about showing movies. It's about a lot more. It's become a complete out of home entertainment, and and India is a completely entertainment starved country. Coming back to your specific question on OTT, OTT will survive, and so would cinemas. There's absolutely no correlation. Uh, has uh, cinema died in America? Netflix is still there. In fact, all research indicates that people who watch more Netflix. Come out and watch more cinema. So it, it's directly proportional. Amazing. So uh, uh, PBR is in there in actually three sectors, not just the entertainment sector, but also as you rightly said, the hospitality and F and B space. Uh, yeah. How do you see in the last uh, decade and a half that you've been reading, uh, been with PBR? How have the consumers changed, and what are the things as a brand marketer you have observed which have made a difference uh, in your strategy as well? completely changed and now a consumer i would classify more at every level being uh, 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 i would say he is now turning out to be time poor and cash rich and when i say time poor and cash rich he puts a lot of uh, currency on his own time so the fact is when he gets to a cinema he wants the best experience he wants to be pampered for 3 hours he saying you know i'm willing to pay you extra one buck but get me a better service get me better food get me better choice get me a better seat you know we have recliners now in the last row in just about every cinema in the country and recliners sell much before the normal seats sell recliners are always full even in a city like a muradabad lucknow nagpur everybody wants to graduate to a recliner so today people want a better product a better service and they are willing to pay more for a better product thank you sir thank you for that insight so this is uh, uh, cinemas have been a capex heavy industry and uh, you know the capex and the return on investment is slightly longer than typically a f and b restaurant or something like that so in this scenario how have you managed to scale uh, yet you know that's translated into a value creation at uh, you know market capitalization as well uh, so the, as you rightly said we understand our business model we wherever we invest we have an roi uh, a benchmark of 3 and a half to 4 years and um, Uh, and and uh, i think the kind of rigor that goes in and the understanding that we have today of our business of the consumer and the kind of rigor we do to understand the markets uh, uh, normally 90% of the cases we don't go to off our targets 
and and uh, once done uh, once our monies are back in about 3 and a half 4 years then it's actually good run and cinemas once get established can go on for about 20 25 years so uh, i think uh, uh, I, i think the uh, the overall understanding of the business really helps us uh, galvanize through this maze my next question is on um, your journey sir in terms of the journey uh, what can you tell us about a, a challenging brand situation that you faced and how did how you handled it for the benefit of the audience uh, uh, challenging uh, for my, uh, sorry i didn't get the question challenging uh, brand situation a marketing decision or uh, some uh, some kind of a challenge in the uh, within oh. the uh see as i said i i had this on my slide i, I have i am very very uh blessed to uh, sort of have a wonderful team uh we are grounded we work hard wherever we get stuck i think we come together we can discuss uh we uh, have a lot of freedom from the management to try out things and also there is a certain way pvr functions which is when in doubt do a pilot so we run a pilot uh if that pilot works we scale up if the pilot doesn't work we look go back and come back again with a new pilot but the reality is if we are convinced uh and and we've got done our numbers well we've spoken uh, to our own teams uh i think it's a pretty much sorted uh process along the way we and as i said along the way we could fail we quickly make notes of that uh uh sort of study why we fail learn from our mistakes and move on so uh, if you are to pick uh, the top 3 branding initiatives that have defined pvr uh, which are the ones that, the landmark ones that you pick it could be branding or it could be a technology that you've used at pvr actually lots uh, 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 the the fact that uh, directors cut i think has been a big one for us uh getting all these technology players like IMAX 4DX uh, again i would say big and of course the third would be on the food side i think has been excellent and one of uh, uh, another branding exercise which got us great dividends uh, uh, is actually advertising uh, business uh, pvr today earns more advertising buck per seat uh, installed uh higher than anyone else in the world so so technically uh, I, i and i think fnb advertising directors cut uh, uh has and some technology has been some big uh, branding opportunities for pvr so uh, one of the other things uh, at pvr is that we see uh, that there's been a clear case of a smooth transition transition from a promoter driven business to bringing in professionals and moving yeah. and you were at the center of that transition so what are the tips that you would give an entrepreneur who is looking to transition from a family or a promoter driven business to a professional business uh, simple uh, uh, as i i had put it in my presentation trust in teams uh, go out and hire better people as entrepreneurs you are the one pe- people who should never be insecure professionals can get insecure about jobs they can get into politics but why should entrepreneurs be you ha- you own the company you should have the best talent to come and work for you have the humility listen to people and let go uh, the most important thing is letting go a lot of entrepreneurs don't let go of lot of things uh, if they let go uh, and uh, way back um, i am still the fourth or the fifth ceo for pvr reality is ajay started to uh sort of exhibit this qualities long long back so even when there were hardly four or five cinemas he had a professional a ceo run this company so from that point of view uh, uh these are some of the dividends that he is getting because he had a very professional setup from the very beginning wonderful sir so i uh, you know from in terms of the talking about entrepreneurs so i'd uh, like you to tell a couple of uh, skills branding skills to be specific because we have lot of lot of entrepreneurs who are from the marketing and branding background uh, that you feel an on, uh, a branding skill that you feel an entrepreneur has to pick up in the next few, few years to do well in business i think uh, be unique i think being unique is something which is very important 
in communication be clear today people consumers have absolutely no time uh, advertising is completely changed there's no point being trying to be very clever be clear be specific be uncluttered very important i just see too much clutter in the head and in the ad and in the branding so uh, sort of uh, let go of the clutter uh, and and be very simple clear precise and be unique i think a lot of focus is being given to upd as people i I've, i've learned this new term called the upd unique presentation device people forget brands are built on usps not upds so first create a great product then look at a upd it's great to have a upd but along with the usp if you don't have a usp and you're just trying to do a upd case nothing is going to work consumers are going to see through that uh, talking about branding also in the last decade what's changed with branding is the way digital is coming into our lives with all the social media and digital so we'd like to hear a little bit about uh, how pvr is handled digital how are you active on digital fronts and what are your plans for for, uh, for enhancing the digital presence i think very very active this is the need of the r i don't think any brand can do without a digital intervention today uh, so uh, pvr sees this as a great opportunity to have conversations uh, to do a lot of social listening on these platforms and uh, uh, and and actually be much closer to the consumer than ever before so today like you said is the video showing and within a second people said yes i can see it i can hear it so this is the kind of response you can get so you can scream out and say hey th- do you like this and people say yes i like it or i don't like it uh, and uh, the only thing is that uh, uh, sometimes you have to know what is uh, what is the real message out of the overall noise that gets created that comes with experience that comes with maturity that comes with also asking the right question uh, you know there are certain issues there are certain topics that you cannot discuss on social they'll never give you the right uh, feedback uh, so uh, if you don't make those mistakes so social uh, is 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 a tool that needs to be used carefully it it cannot it, it's not one size fit all you should know on what topic social will work on what topic it will not work how much it will work how much it would not work and and uh, uh, as long as you you use it effectively uh, you can communicate the the good thing about social is what you are made of uh the consumers get to know lot easier because you are having a conversation because you are you have a personality the way you talk the way you address an issue the consumers get your point of view really really fast and i think uh, hence it's a wonderful tool but we should know how to use it thank you sir so, uh, for all the entrepreneurs who want wanting to understand a bit more about digital we of course have the go digital uh, webinar coming up on friday and saturday which you will which we'll share more about you so coming to uh, uh, one of the last questions before i bring the audience in for the question uh you have now held in the affairs at pbr for 15 years and of course you did mention that in the next 3 years you're looking at doubling pbr in terms of the screen presence but what is the vision that you have that you want to leave behind this is the pbr you want to leave behind for the next generation of leaders from pbr will pick it up what what is the vision that you'd like to share with us uh i would say it needs to be uh, if we can keep to our position of being a great love mark where people uh uh sort of uh, endorse this brand beyond the the product attributes of this brand uh i i think it will make all of us very happy when we can emotionally um uh, be far more closer to the consumer when we can co- when people say it's a question that uh you know about 10 years back if you would ask anyone how old is sony or nike as a brand and people would say it's a young brand when you personify nike 
or Sony, they come across as young brands. They are not young. They're technically 100-year-old brands. So they are young because they have managed to evolve. And I think the one word that I, I, I think uh, will sort of make or break any brand is relatability. Uh, the, the fact is, can PBR evolve and continuously change itself to be more and more relatable to the changing consumer is the biggest challenge. And I think in the changing times, consumers are changing. Consumers are promiscuous. There is no concept of brand loyalty. Consumers change brands like they change shirts. So the fact of the matter is in this world, if you can keep them along with you, you can have great the really iconic uh, brand, which I call it a love mark, really. Thank you. So keeping in touch with the consumers and changing with the times, that's pretty much the secret of most of the large brands. So, so we, uh, before we, uh, you know, I uh, kind of collate, collate the questions from the audience, we have a, a special guest joining us uh, now. We have a young entrepreneur who's in the entertainment uh, industry. Uh, he's been producing movies, you know, been a part of that growth which is uh, for the small uh, films that are happening. And um, we have Samir Bharatram with us from uh, Super Talkies from Chennai. He has a couple of questions on the entertainment industry that he wants sure. to ask you. Samir, you can unmute, unmute, unmute yourself and switch on your video and have your questions. And then I'll organize the other questions. Hi, Bala. Uh, thanks for getting me in. Uh, hello, Mr. Gautam. Hi, hi, Samir. Uh, Hi. Uh, firstly, congratulations on a, on a fantastic journey. I mean, and uh, and the way you took us through is <laughs> amazing. I mean, we enjoyed every bit of your presentation. I think Bala did ask you pretty much every relevant question possible, but I'll ask you a couple of questions uh, which 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 are relevant to the industry that I'm part of. Uh, firstly, how, how how important is brand building for studios that are making films, small films? Because this is a big studio world, right? They are the big ones. Uh, but yeah, people like us who are trying to make uh, cinema's products, uh, what should we do uh, in terms of uh, you know trying to differentiate? Yes, our products are you know are a big factor of differentiation. The kind of content we choose to make as independent uh, houses, but what beyond that is going to help us to build and establish a studio brand? So I have a simple answer to that. Uh, you must have a vision first of all, dream. Close your eyes and dream and dream for with your team, uh, take them out, uh, your core team. If you are the one who's doing the thinking, think and say, what do I want to be known uh, for after about 20 years? Uh, so the answer lies within you, number one. Number two, in, in content and production business, the one uh, question that you always have to ask is, what will I not produce? What, what kind of films will I not do? Because, you know, most producers and studios say, I don't want to make a loss. Now, that's, business is always an outcome of what you will do. What would you do is, is what will define you. So do you want to be as big? Then that's the path. So if I want to go to Jaipur, first of all, I need to know which direction I have to go. So the moment I say I need to go to Jaipur, I've got my path clear in front of me. Now, depends. I need to get to Jaipur in five hours. If it's five hours, I can take a bus. If it's one hour, I'll have to take a, 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 a helicopter. If it's 15 minutes, I have to take something. So everything gets decided by your vision. Uh, so it's very important for you to set that uh, off. So when we were making films, we said we will... We will we, we did a workshop on saying what kind of films we'll never do. What kind of films we will do. Will we do it with newcomers? Will we do a different language film? What, what should I be known for? Because in, in what you would do, if it's all related to just money and making money or profits, then there is no difference between you, me, or anyone else in the world because everybody wants more money. Uh, uh, you know, success, uh, lesser burden, 
uh, 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 no debts everybody wants the same thing it is what you want to do and with what sacrifice point if i wanted to do well and i was only a school pass out then i had to go and tell my boss in lintas that i am available to you for 24 hours 365 days use me as much as you can this was my sacrifice point a guy who came from i am mm ahmedabad said sorry i will not do this i will not do market research i will not struggle that much and i need so much money my boss never paid me money i used to get 30 bucks on the day i would work and for four years i continued to work like that i could not speak a line of english when i started off oh. i had never been on the stage ever in my life till the age of 25 so the fact of the matter is it is about what you're willing to sacrifice and what is your goal post if you have those two clear and as i said there is no shortcut to success resilience and hunger if if, if you have the three and some luck by the side hopefully you will get there wonderful sir thank you uh the other question is uh cinema seen as a uh, as as an extremely risky proposition it's always been right there is a big perception that it's it's a dangerous business to be in uh, in fact when i uh, told people that i want to make films i want to produce films uh, my family and friends thought i was crazy yeah. <laughs> so uh, they thought you know i've lost it and uh, but i believe that uh, the industry uh, had uh, no issues but it's how, how things were done right so i i thought there is an opportunity which i can i can capitalize so uh, so that's why we see probably very few entrepreneurship examples uh, uh, companies are not investing much you know regular corporate companies not investing much into films uh, uh, on, on our uh, you know high net worth individuals who have the passion to make cinema they are still holding back uh do you see this changing especially when uh, revenues are becoming transparent like the chains like yours which are practically controlling you know the 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 theatrical revenue being very transparent through online booking now digital contributing to a fair chunk of uh, you know revenue and satellite do you see this and because in your circles i'm sure you're 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 communicating and getting in touch with a lot of people do you see this attitude changing with you know people willing to get into cinema as a healthy industry are they looking at it positively so samir uh, uh, first and foremost you must know one thing that pvr got into production with roughly about 150 crores in their pocket uh, this was about 8 9 years back right. we made about seven odd films Uh, the and the problem for us was the first two films we made with amir khan uh, tare zameen par and right. jaane tu na jaane na and they were fairly big success and perhaps that killed us because we went off to sleep and we thought it's a very easy business and we signed many more films and everything flopped after that so and so our board said that this is like gambling we don't right. want to, you to get into this business come back and focus on multiplexes i think uh, one there is an inherent nature of this business because it's creative business and creativity sometimes does not talk numbers uh, this is a fallacy in that uh, 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 and and because of which a lot of creative resources take uh, precedence over commercial topics so when a film is getting made you may want a big star you may want a big production you may want whatever and everything uh, uh, goes haywire simply because you get drawn into the creative process however i am a firm believer number one you said you saw an opportunity you saw a gap i somehow feel there is a gap and there is an opportunity there is nothing called a good or a bad film remember that right there is nothing called a bad film there's only called a bad budget because if you're made a film in a wrong budget you can never make a film every film is a success as long as you've made the film in the right budget every film the, so the fact of the matter is one there is some inherent qualities of this business that you need to keep uh, you should be aware of 
you should always be in focus of. But barring those, there is a very strong ROI matrix that you can work on uh, looking at today's market. And uh, I believe there is certainly a very, very strong case for smart young entrepreneurs, businesses to get into it. They will eventually get into it. I, I, and every year, one or two new names come into the market. The, it, it's just a question of when people begin to communicate to them that, hey, there is a business model around it. The moment you say it's creativity, you could make 100% or you could go down 100%, people get very scared. But when there is a, a margin of error that you begin to play with and you inform people that, yes, we can go down by 15%, but in the best case scenario, you can also make plus 40. That band is something that needs to be more visible. Stars need to understand that when a film does well, it's not as if a producer can only end up making 10 or 15%. The producer needs to then make a lot of money. So the problem is when the film does well, you end up making 15%. When the film uh, uh, fails, you make 50% loss. That is not being fair. So every constituent of the, of the business needs to put this in place. It cannot be that the, the, uh, the cinematographer, the photographer, the actor, everybody makes money, but you lose money. It doesn't work like that. When more and more people will come together in this collaborative manner and somebody will stitch them together in the business model, it will be a fantastic uh, uh, business to be in. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you, Samir, uh, for the question. Thanks. And uh, yeah, so we're going to do our premiere of our next uh, film, hopefully after the lockdown in, uh, I think, VR Mall mostly. Uh, awesome. I'm going to get in touch with Meena anyway, you know, we sure. are in regular touch. So uh, I, we, we're going to invite you <laughs> for our Thank premiere you. and look forward. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. So Thank Thank you. Thank nice. Thank you. We just have uh, another 10 minutes for a few questions that have come from audience. I've compiled it together because many of them have asked similar questions. So if I can go ahead, sir, ask you this question. So one sure. of the uh, multiple questions that have come about is, um, you know, as audience, uh, we want to know that post-COVID, uh, we are paranoid about uh, entering, you know, closed public spaces. How is PBR going to handle it and reassure that, you know, uh, hygiene and uh, aspects of... So uh, we've drawn a very exhaustive uh, list of things that we are doing. In fact, just after your call, I'm getting into that call to... Uh, to actually now look at the mechanics from simple things like masks, gloves, sanitization, to UV equipments, to, to making sure even the air uh, is actually uh, getting cleaned, uh, to the fact that there is antivirus and bacterial film which will be plastered on handles. There is treatments being done in auditorium and all surfaces of the cinema where uh, a virus, uh, when exposed to that surface, would die automatically. Uh, uh, some bits of the fact that social distancing norms will come into play. Uh, but all in all, I, I just feel uh, uh, all these fears will be uh, put to rest as soon as uh, the business comes back to normal. And PVR... Uh, and all other chains. Here I can not just talk about PVR, but every other cinema chain in the country are coming together to form a very exhaustive list of things that they would do to ensure that consumer and employee safety is at the forefront. And, uh, and I think we should do a fairly good job at that. Thank you, sir. And for all the audience who have been, um, you know, there have been a lot of messages that uh, COVID and post-COVID scenario, I would like to tell you that this too will pass and I think we'll be back to business soon. So there's no need to worry. We wanted to keep this interaction largely positive and try to learn from Mr. Gautam Datta. So that's the reason we've kept a large part of COVID away from this conversations. So, um, uh, Mr. Gautam, we have an interesting question from another Mr. Gautam Kumar who runs a single screen uh, somewhere in uh, India. It's Ilex Cinema. Uh, okay. Operate, uh, not a single screen. They operate 33 screens. So wow. he's asking you. So can can we access to mentorship from PVR in, in, uh, if we need to reach out? 
how can you mentor us is what is question mm, good question never thought of this uh, yeah but uh, you know there is a mai body where he should uh, get be a part of not only pvr but every other uh, multiplex chain and uh, personalities are a part of that group uh, and and this is a forum in which people can ask question uh, and and they get very elaborate answers also uh, i i must say this for my category and industry that this is one category and in industry where people really want to help each other uh, they want to talk and they share data experiences very very openly we do that with all global chains around the world so we are part of the global uh, uh, federation uh, of cinema uh, body uh, we have friends uh, uh, you know all over the globe so we call them uh, they are on our first name basis all the ceos of these companies and and they are so open about discussing uh, their issues and and some great learnings happen so uh, as long as he desires to learn as long as he desires to be coached and mentored i think he should be ready with his questions and be a part of mai reach out to uh, individuals uh, and and uh, we should all be very happy to help him thank you sir hope gautam you got got your answer all the best for your journey uh, to uh, growing your business as well so we have another question from mr jagdish and few other uh, participants as well <coughs> when will pvr reach tier 2 tier 3 deeper into india we've already reached there it's just that um, the opportunities are not so many and we have to tread this path a little carefully uh, as i said pvr always does its pilots learns from the pilot and then moves ahead so the pilot in tier 2 and 3 have already begun we have more than about 10 15 cinemas running in tier 3 and tier 2 markets uh, we uh, we want to run this experiment for a couple of years uh, to see how it sort of scales up we continue to still look for great locations and we are signing them on and uh, yeah uh, as and 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 you know uh, to be very honest that there is still huge amount of potential in metros and the mini metros in india and uh, and we tend to sort of still have a lot of properties opening in the major towns of india but that should possibly saturate in a couple of years and then i think along the way this tier 2 and 3 would also open up as i said we go back to our uh, philosophy and vision of saying our, our vision is very clear that we uh, we want to take india to the movies we have a brand called pvr utsav which is technically been uh, put together for the tier 2 and 3 markets uh, so we are already on course with that awesome sir so before we uh, go to the last three questions uh, our, uh, we have had some request to share the details regarding the next uh, webinar that's happening so um, uh, can you all see my screen uh, you can type in yes if you can see my shared screen so we have a go digital webinar that's coming up for uh, branding and marketing you know professionals and entrepreneurs as well so we have a special offer here for you on uh, for whoever is attending this webinar uh, this is a go digital webinar which will help you set up your digital channels properties help you to put you in a path to acquire customers digitally and how you can increase your sale online and engage with your customers better how to run campaigns on facebook insta and all that which is normally at a 3000 i think uh, what mma and rai have done is that for uh, this particular uh um, you know webinar attendees they have given a special offer so i'll share that with you and this will of course be uh, with key resource people which will include santosh palavesh digital marketing guru mr mukul bafna who's arvind of c uh, uh, sorry uh, ceo of arvind internet they've taken nearly hundreds of brands online and mr kanan who's the e-commerce head at high design high design does about 25% of their business online so they'll be sharing their case study as well so uh, this is a content that you will get and all um, including course material worksheets access to mentors and a certificate by mma and rai and all of this is now at a special price of 1499 for the next 30 minutes for people who are taking action uh, on this webinar platform so go digital members.gr8.com is the link in which you can go and subscribe so all of you guys who want to do that you can go ahead and do this as 
uh, subscribe as well. I am just sharing uh, the link on the chat window here. So 1499 it is for, uh, for guys for the next 30 minutes. So you can go ahead and meanwhile, I'll finish up two questions. So we have a question from Amarnath uh, from, uh, from Coimbatore. He runs a uh, filter coffee chain out of Coimbatore. And he, uh, so he has an interesting question. He says, filter coffee is an iconic dish. When do we see it at all of the PVRs? So some of our, most of our South uh, actually um, uh, chains have a filter coffee option. Uh, but it's just that in our uh, space, you have to wind coffee quickly uh, because the time is limited. So we have a, a quick wending uh, filter coffee option. Uh, it may not be the original recipe, uh, but yeah, uh, th this is something that uh, we've been doing for many years and uh, yeah, it, it's, it's already there, but we can always improve upon it for sure. So there's a question which asks us uh, that I go to PBR. I'm a loyal customer of PBR. Uh, I uh, experience all the brands, PBR IMAX, PBR Icon and Lux. Uh, but how do you uh, differentiate between these multiple brands? How do you communicate this differentiation? So, uh, uh, you know, uh, every brand is there for a reason. Every brand uh, has been given uh, a complete explanation. There is a Bible uh, that uh, makes a brand what it is. So Icon is for all opulence. If, if uh, our per uh, auditorium expense exceeds four and a half, five crores uh, in terms of opulence, uh, uh, foyer areas, then it is uh, christened as an icon. Superplex is largely on size. Any uh, cinema which is above 10 screens is uh, 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 superplex. Uh, director's cut uh, is, is uh, all recliners with food and other options available. Uh, Lux is a new name for gold cinemas. So th there is like proper definition for each of the cinema category that we have. And wherever we are, uh, we try to communicate that uh, very clearly. 4DX, IMAX, Playhouse are auditorium formats, uh, which shows, uh, gives you a different experience. Uh, so Playhouse is for the kids. IMAX is the large screen. Uh, 4DX is where your seat moves and you have multiple effects. So uh, everything gets communicated both at the cinema and in the mass media both. Thank you, sir. So at this point, I would also like to thank, uh, you know, a few people in the PVR team who have helped us bring this together. We, we were working very closely with four or five uh, uh, senior members of the team. I'd like to thank Mrs. Shalu Savarwal, Senior VP Sales and Marketing at PVR. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to, of course, thank Meena, who uh, made this connect and made it possible, Ms. Deepa. And of course, of course, we have on controls, Mr. Ankush Mohanty as well. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys at PVR are having a good time listening. To I you. had I had given Ankush a lot of miserable time over the <laughs> last three days. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. No, it's been awesome. Thank you. So the next question is, uh, you know, uh, about the, is from Arun Nair. Uh, he wants to know about, uh, uh, do you have plans to extend the brand, uh, you know, expand it beyond just Sri Lanka internationally, any other countries you're looking at for PVR? We'll always be open, but currently there is one more opening in Sri Lanka. Uh, we, uh, we've taken a conscious call of not going to the Middle East. We were contemplating that last year, uh, but we've decided against it. Uh, so far, nothing more on the, uh, on the anvil. But however, if at all something exciting comes in, we will definitely. But India honestly has great potential and wonderful opportunity still we and this is something that we understand uh, the consumers we completely emote with so honestly we want to focus a lot more to india than anything else sri lanka seemed uh, so much a, a extension of india that we wanted to sort of get in there uh, but uh, so far i think uh, for the next at least 12 months we would be concentrating more uh, in india within india we have a question from Rama Subramaniam. He asks that you had mentioned in your presentation that uh, you know we need to lead the customers into what they want. They necessarily don't know what they want. So how um, how does a CEO or an entrepreneur balance between managing customer expectations and also giving them something that 
you know they not really know that they want but actually you give them and end up end up being happy what's the secret so 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 a lot of automobile companies does it and we also learned from the automobiles and this really came in my learning came in from automobile many many years ago and that i sort of used in pvr which is about saying you can't go and ask a consumer what what more do you need in your car uh invariably he won't know uh, because you know some car in the market already has that feature so he will not be able to redefine now if because you are an industry expert and you feel that he could be wanting something more uh, uh, uh then best is to experiment pilot it check it because what we have seen is consumers can't tell you what they want but consumers can always tell you yes or no approval or decline on what they see so i could wear if i ask you what should i wear you may not be able to help me but if i wear a yellow shirt or or a pink shirt or a white shirt you may say this looks nice and this does not look nice so consumers give you their verdict lot clearer than asking them what should i do next that is something for experts to decide once you do it show it to them ask them for their opinion they will immediately tell you thank you sir so we we through uh, most of the questions so we would like to end it with your hobby which is painting <laughs> can you tell us a little bit uh, about yourself so how do you actually spend your free time what have you been doing uh, of course you have been working during the lockdown but apart from that anything that you've caught up on you know how have no, you I, i do a lot of cooking actually i've been spending okay. a lot of time cooking i used i love cooking so cooking is something that i've been doing yeah i've been trying my uh, art is very expensive i went to amsterdam last month so i i visited a lot of art galleries couldn't afford to buy any so i thought i'll make some of my own so i was trying to copy something that uh, i saw uh, and uh, yeah i enjoy doing that abstract is something that i can still manage but nothing beyond it i'm just trying to burn some canvases and see if i'm worth anything that's all if i may for the benefit of your fans can you pan the uh, camera to any of your you know art that you've done in your house no oh, there, there we go yes can you see it there are two paintings where i have done that yeah okay wonderful i think <laughs> lot of work in progress during the lockdown as well yeah yeah, yeah absolutely thank you very much sir i think it's we're getting amazing feedback so i uh, before we uh, leave the session i want all of you to type in your feedback to mr gautam datta uh, you can thank him for being here spending his one and a half hours with us and whatever you learned and all the positive feedback will be shared with him thanks a lot uh, thank uh, you for being here thanks uh, for spending the time i think we really had uh, a great pleasure pleasure in host- hosting you i think we are getting all the comments fantastic session and we are looking to see pvr back post the lockdown so you have a lot of fans here today thanks a lot thank sir thank you thanks so much i'm yeah. proud to be a part of this family thank you dear thank, thank you thank you very much sir thank, thank you thank you audience thank thanks you. for being a part of it you can type in your comments we'll be live for some time and uh, post that we will log off and also please don't forget to log in for the go digital webinar that's going to happen on friday and saturday and i'm typing the key once again the link once again for you that's at a special price of 1499 thank you audience uh, hope to see you soon for the next session tomorrow that's going to happen with mr Uh, nagasami danapalan managing director of dindikal talapakkadi T- tomorrow at 4 to 5:30 pm thanks a lot